Hello Year 6 and welcome to Thursday's Book Talk session. We're going to cover three reasons for reading today with our interactive rainbow and more of our story. But before we move on to the story, I want to think about the part I read to you on Tuesday, uh, part four and chapter two. And I've got some quiz questions for you. So if you want to grab a pencil, pause the video, see if you can answer these questions. So question one, who is Billy asked to speak to on the phone? Question two, what does Hitler have on the wall? Question three, how did Billy feel after his conversation with Mr Chamberlain? Four, where did Hitler invade in March 1939? And five, what did Billy hide in his suitcase? And don't forget, you can pause the video if you want to spend time writing those answers. OK, let's go through them. So who is Billy asked to speak to on the phone? It was the Prime Minister at the time, Mr Chamberlain. Question two, what does Hitler have on the wall? And this is what Mr Chamberlain noticed when he, had, uh, he visited. There was a painting of Billy as a soldier carrying a wounded man to hospital. And that's how he remembered Billy. Question three, how does Billy feel after his conversation with Mr Chamberlain? Well, he was extremely happy and relieved. He'd spent ages feeling sad and glum and worried he'd done the right, wrong thing. So it, it made him feel the opposite. Where did Hitler invade in March 1939? It was Czechoslovakia. It was called Czechoslovakia then, but it's now split into two separate countries. You might have seen on an atlas or been to the Czech Republic and Slovakia. And five, what did Billy hide in his suitcase? This is where we left the story the other day, a pistol. Actually, before we start reading, let's go to our reading rainbow. Our first reason for reading today is asking, and this is this the speech bubble on the top of the Fantastic Slayer, and it's thinking about the, the way the author uses speech um, and the interaction between characters and what this tells us as a reader. So look out for this while I'm reading. I'm going to read quite a lot of the first for the first reason to read for you. Billy got on the train in Coventry that morning, knowing exactly what he was intending to do. He had found out all he could from the library, from the newspapers. He knew where he was going. That had been simple enough to work out. He had decided that near Hitler's mountain home in the Alps, the Berghof, near Birch's Garden, where Mr Chamberlain had gone before, would be the best place to do it. He'd seen photographs of that place and of Hitler walking his dog in the snow with the mountains and the forest behind. He had read that Hitler went there as often as he could, but exactly how it was to be done, where and when, he knew that that would depend on keeping to his plan, on fate and on his own patience. He only knew it had to be done, had to be tried, whatever the consequences. So he took the train to London and then the boat across the channel to Calais. He didn't doubt for one moment as he was leaving that this was the only thing he could do. But as he looked out from the stern of the ship at the White Cliffs of Dover, he wondered if he would ever see them again. Wasn't likely, he thought. In his mind, it was as if he was going over the top again, just gritting his teeth and doing what had to be done. He knew then that the chances of survival were not good. What will be, will be, he thought. It helped, in a way, that he began to feel seasick then. He'd forgotten how, how that felt after all these years. His stomach churned with the roll of the ship. How he wished he'd stayed at home. The sight of the French coast lifted his spirits, but the waves kept heaving until they were in port. The French customs official hardly gave him or his passport a glance and soon he was in Paris and on the train down to Munich. 
At the German frontier in the middle of the night it was a very different matter altogether. Everyone in the carriage was questioned by a frontier policeman, passports and papers scrupulously examined. He seemed courteous enough with his questions, but Billy felt the threat behind everyone. And why are you coming to Germany, please? What reason? I am an artist, Billy told him. I am going walking in the Alps, drawing the mountains, the wildlife, the birds. The policeman demanded to see his work. Billy showed him his sketchbooks. He seemed satisfied, impressed even. Good, he said. Very good. You are like our mountains. They are very beautiful. The most beautiful in the world. And now your suitcase, please. I have to see your suitcase. Billy opened it for him, his heart pounding in his ears. The policeman picked up the pencil case first and opened it. And then he took out his pyjamas and his socks, all his clothes, examining them all closely. He pulled out everything, emptied the suitcase entirely, and then felt around the bottom of it, the false bottom, with the pistol hidden, un hidden and taped underneath it, right under his searching fingers. Time itself seemed to slow during those moments, so that the moments became minutes. At last he seemed satisfied. You travel with very little, said the frontier policeman. Welcome to Germany. Hail Hitler. And I want to stop there and we'll go to our rainbow. And if you remember, I said our first reason to read was the asking lens. I want you to focus on a specific bit of speech from what I've just read and choose one you think is significant, it's important. So you can use that sentence opener, significant dialogue in the story is, in that bit I've just read, and pick it. And you've already done your direct quote, so to get that extra point you're going to have to explain why is that significant, what is it showing, what's the show not tell, what is it implying. And our bonus word for this section is appropriate. I wonder if you can fit that in. So remember, pause the video before we go on to the second reason to read. OK, hopefully you've done that. And that's your first sentence for today. Our second reading reason for reading is this logical meaning making. And it's making links between what we already know. So we'll go back to our text. down here. And that was it. Billy could breathe again. Munich station was full of soldiers, full of policemen. So many people seemed to be in uniform. Even some of the children too. There were swash stickers everywhere, worn as armbands, hanging on buildings. A military band was playing somewhere. The thumping of drums and the clashing of cymbals echoing around the station drums of war, Billy felt. The more he looked about him, the more he could see that this was a country making ready for war on the march. It was only confirmed in him his determination to go through with what he had in mind. And do we know as a reader what, what, what has he got in mind? We've got a lot of suggestions there and hints. He didn't stay in Munich any longer than he had to. He could feel there were watching eyes everywhere. From Munich he caught the bus to the mountains. He rented a room in a quiet village he found on, on the map, just a few miles from Hitler's house in the mountains. Far enough away, he hoped, not to arouse suspicion. The important thing Billy knew was to be inconspicuous, which was not easy. Do you know what that means about trying to blend in and to not draw attention to himself? He was obviously foreign, obviously English, and a tourist. So to begin with, he played the part he needed to play, going nowhere near the Berghof, just going out walking every day, sitting down on his stool 
and sketching somewhere near the village till everyone got used to seeing him about, seeing him intent on his drawing. Do you know what that word intent means? It's like really focused on his drawing and almost using his drawing as a disguise for what he's really there for. Okay, let's go back to our reason to reading. And I said we were going to focus on the logical meaning making. Okay, as a reader, I was clear about and you need to choose something what we really know what do we know but maybe confused by or not sure by something else and then can you go back and pause the video go back in the text can you find evidence to support what you're thinking so as a reader what what are we really certain about clear about and what are we confused or unsure about and the bonus word for this is deliberate if you're doing something on purpose and to choosing to do something deliberately okay so this is your second sentence pause the video write your second sentence and then we'll come back okay so you've hopefully got your two sentence and our final reason for reading is this one which we don't do as as often accessing phonics and grammar so we're going to look at Emma Carroll's choice of grammat grammatical features in her work in the last bit I read. So go back to the text. Even in the evenings he would be working away at his sketchbook in the village cafe, puffing on his pipe, drinking his beer. His sketchbook was full of drawings of the mountains, of the villagers, of the snow-covered houses, of the church, of the deer he had seen, the hares, the eagles. The local people were friendly enough. Some of them even gave him a drink from time to time. They seemed intrigued by his drawings. The village policemen once. They were obviously delighted when they recognised this house or that, particularly if it was their own house or this villager or that, especially when it was themselves or one of the family. Many of them were openly admiring of his work and would try out their broken English of him. But always, from the wall of the cafe, the picture of Adolf Hitler looked down on him. Every time Billy looked up at it, and he tried not to, he felt recognition passing between them. Do you know what that means? If you, can you see that word to recognise? Like it almost feels that there's a connection there that they each know of each other. Every day now, Billy would go out walking further in the snow and every day a little closer to the Berghof. But still always, if anyone saw him, he'd be sitting there on his stool in the snow and drawing. There were often eagles wheeling about the sky, their cries shrill and clear on the air. So we always had something to draw and something to show the villagers in the evening on his return. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to pick this one. The writer makes interesting grammatical choices, particularly. So Emma Carroll's quite good at writing sentences and varying her structure and the different features. But I'd like you to pick on one of those features. I wonder if you could focus on the sentence starters or um, the way she, she writes her sentences. Has she got main and subordinate clauses? Or what about use of dashes? There's lots of dashes in that text. I'll go, you can pause the video and go back to the text. Does that make it more interesting? And what effect do those dashes have? Remember a dash, the purpose is to add extra information. And does that help us in how she's used them in that bit of the text? And find your evidence and your bonus word. Is concept 
another word for idea. Can you put that together? That will be your third and final sentence of today's book talk and post them to Dojo or the children in school. You can share them in class and I look forward to seeing them soon. Thank you, Yusuf.